from coast to coast, and from north to south. But there is a hand that governs, even though it seems like it's out of hand, it's not out of hand. It's in God's control. What's going on now is his word is being unfolded. This has already been prophesied that these days would be. And you have to, as a church, a body of baptized believers in Christ, this is the time now you have to press your way. I, I know it's, it's people are fearful and uh, moving in fear. But the church don't move in fear. We move in faith. Although, although we are, we are complying with socially distancing ourselves by family. And, and, but God is in control. Don't let nobody tell you God is not in control. I just want to say to those who are looking in, don't you allow yourself to become lazy and stay at home. The Bible talks about gathering. Saints are together together. Comply, yes. I, like I pre-recorded this morning, we we uh, have hand sanitized at the door. Amen. You can wear your mask if you want. That's fine. Amen. We take temperatures also. You know, if you have a temperature, you have to. You can't come in. Amen. But God has been with us through this yes. pandemic. Yes. He's gonna be with us through this pandemic. Yes. And so, God is holding us yeah. for his purpose. Some people, they get comfortable and stop praying. They get comfortable and stop reading their Bible. And then they become like the codaisical in worshiping God. You see, God got a plan. Yes, that's greater than man's plan. Amen. And it's for man's soul. If you do right, God will, he'll take care of this. Amen. Psalm 121 says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, mm -hmm. which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer your foot to be moved. He that keepeth you will not slumber. Yeah. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Yes, yes. The Lord is your keeper. Yes. The Lord is your shed upon your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. Mm -hmm. He shall preserve your soul. Yes. Oh, thank you, God. Yes. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Yeah. We're going to pray now for, we have a list of over 160 names along with our prayer board. I want the prayer board updated. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There's still some names up there that should be up there, I believe. And then I want to 
uh, purge the prayer list because yeah. there are some names on there yeah. I believe should not be on there. But we pray for everybody Amen. who have a want to pray. And, and we just don't bow our heads. We get results. Yeah. God has heard and he has answered our prayers. Yeah. Oh, yes, he is. Yeah. Let us pray. <clears throat> oh, my. Almighty God. The Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thou who sit high and you look low into the hearts and minds of men and women. Yes. You know the boys and girls. Yes, you do. You created and you made each one of us. Yes. Yes. It's not a soul that you don't know. And Master, we call on you this morning in behalf of the names that are on our prayer list. Some are so sick and medicine is not doing any good. Master, we call on you for the prisoners, those who are in prison. Look upon Denise this morning and look upon those who have written in time past. Lord, you're everywhere at the same time. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Please, sir, have mercy upon them. Some are innocent and incarcerated for not doing a crime, but you're everywhere. Yes, Lord. We pray that you will look upon the judges and retry their case. Be it your holy will in the name of Jesus. We pray for the doctors that are going to administer the operations yes. and those who have asked for prayer yes. who will have an operation. Yes. Lord, be with them as they go into the operating room, yes. guiding the doctor's mind in his hand. Yes. That they would have a successful operation and a speedy recovery. Look upon those who have convalescent homes due to this COVID, COVID some cannot receive visitors but you are there lonely hours but you're a company keeper. Yes. We pray for those who are contemplating suicide. Yes. Master, change their minds. Yes. Let them know there's hope yes. in a hopeless situation. Yes. Oh, Lord. You stand with your arms wide open for them yes. to come to you. Hope for tomorrow. Our ancestors enslaved had hope for tomorrow. Here we are in the land of the free. We have opportunities to call on your name because of their hope and prayers to be for their and their children. Children's children. Look upon the president and the Congress and the judges and the court systems, judiciary system, Lord. We're in a turmoil in this country. I know you know, Lord. Oh, have mercy. You said a divided house wouldn't stand. We need you, Lord. Oh, we need you from coast to coast, from north to south. Be with us this morning. We'll praise your holy name. 
You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. You blessed us with food on our table. You blessed us with beds to sleep in. Clothes to cover our nakedness. Bless your holy name. Praise the boys and girls who walk in the streets. In our neighborhood, Oakland and San Francisco. We pray that you will turn them around before it's everlasting too late. Look upon our loved ones who are lost. Look upon our loved ones. You have a way to turn them around before it's everlasting too late. Look upon the pastors who will stand in John's shoes this morning. Give them power to preach your holy word. We need you, Lord. When this life journey comes to an end, we black others must quit this walk of life. Pray that you receive our soul just any place in your holy kingdom where every day will be Sunday. Sabbath will have an end. No more wars, no more headaches, no more operations. Stick our souls in the sand of time to study war no more. Over yonder, every day will be Sunday. No more goodbyes. This prayer we pray in the name of Jesus. In your holy name, Lord Jesus, we pray this prayer. And after this matter, you said, pray our Father. Our Father, we're in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth, as it is, give us this day. religion, 
but it's, it's not according to what he right. and we've gotten away from the holy body yes. and man shall cry for peace as I as I'm beginning to see what it don't look good I told the church at the beginning of this year on January the 1st, I said, this year, we're going to have to uh, pray and fast yeah. and be patient yeah. while God work out his master plan. Yeah. You still working it out? Yeah. Some of you have forgotten what I said. That's why you're drifting in your mind. the time to press on. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. That's what I, I can say. I feel oh, yes. Oh, yes. I feel like gold yeah. going on. Right. 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 Yes, I, I feel like go going on no trials come on it every hand I can look up I can look up and I know he's there I can I feel I go going on. My soul says, after that, yeah. Thank you, that's all right. I just want to do this by myself. Yeah. My soul says, yeah. Yeah. After I look up. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Now you can help me sing. You 
see God hears and answers prayer. Yes. Yes. All right, I'm going to get out of the way. I, but I know one thing. This is the time, this is the day to praise the Lord. Yes. I had no scripture saying the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. You can say, eat if you want to, by not praising the Lord, by not giving him the glory. You want your prayers answered, but you don't want to praise him. Give him the praise. Just don't sit there with your mouth looking at me. Give him the praise. You talk to another one. You put food on your table. You just not, you just not hear about how broken, not broken. He's kept us. Your mouth is saying something, but your heart is saying I used to hear him say that. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes, yes. It's amazing how you can get tied up in the world and tied up with the world. You can't praise the Lord. That's why he brings problems in your life so that you can turn to him. Oh, you know, oh, he does not. God, uh, did you get the message? Yeah. You start doing what he asked you to. You'll be, you be like joining the uh, big, like the whale's uh, belly. Until you say, Lord, I, I surrender. I just, I look at the Bible and I read the Bible and I, I say, those who fall away, they're going to be lost. That's the Bible. Yeah. 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 See somebody drowning and you go in there and you try to save them when they when they full strength, they'll drown you too. You just wait till they stop wriggling and going on, they just go in there. They go in and save them. Don't you not for one minute relinquish. Don't compromise. Your faith. Your compromise. You know, I'm talking, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. You know, you know, you know what my plan was to come out. I gave, I called Sister Patrice in the office. I gave her a song and I said, okay, we're going to sing this. Blah, blah. And I said, okay, I'm going to record here and give you the song. And uh, give the uh, musician song. And so I was going to sit down. But you know what? God got me talking to somebody. Yeah. I hope you're listening. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not talking to just one somebody. I'm talking to the whole. Some who are looking at me. You should be in church, honey. Brother. God has been too good to you. Oh yes. There are churches, there are church churches that are open that are socially distancing. They're doing the precautions that are demanded or being requested. We are, no, we are. And God has preserved us all through this pandemic. Amen. But today is the day 
to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Yeah. I'm not, I don't want to be the one, but I stand before God. And, and he said, uh, I'm spewing you out because you were neither hot nor cold. Veronica, I don't want to be in that situation. No, daughter. I will give him the praise while I stand. I will praise his name. You know what? And you know what, babe? I don't have to be here to praise him. I praise him now. When I'm driving the car, some of you have been with me when I was working out. I still praise him. On the machine. Done miraculous things. Yeah. I'm talking about answered prayer, yeah. healing the cancer. We, we prayed for those who had cancer and they were healed. The lady from Los Angeles flew up here, stood right there, and said, I'm healed. The doctors gave her up, but she stood there and said, The prayer, you prayed for me. You the Lord heard it heal my breath, heal my body. Yeah. Yeah. Sister Sister had said that the child, uh, the doctor had given the child up. We prayed and the child recovered. Yeah. Don't tell me God is not a doctor of mine. What you do?
Judgment is coming. Judgment is coming.
And, and in God, we, we become uh, complacent sometimes. And God is not interested in our complacency. We want our growth. And say, so that's why it's so hard sometimes. I, I used to... Uh, one day I say, yeah, I told my mother one time, I said, now, I'm, I, the football team needs me, the basketball team needs me. We played on Saturday at that time. Yeah. And I would run in and she said, I don't care, I don't care you are, you gonna, you gonna wash these clothes. Yeah. You gonna make sure you take care of your chores first before you leave this house. I had my mouth stuck out, but I did what I, right. I, I did what I had to do. That's right. That's right. Yes. But I, you know, I look back and I say, thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you for my parents. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. Agreeing with God mm -hmm. uh, have been difficult for men of God in the past. A better question God about a, a nation that wasn't godly to judge a righteous nation. But then he came around when God finished talking with them, he said, The just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. This prophet Jeremiah, I'm saying seemingly with Jeremiah because it's the, the, uh, the uh, season now, the times are so similar of how Israel has become so hard-hearted and so in their way until the Lord told the prophet Jeremiah on three occasions don't even pray for them. Amen. Now God loved his people. Amen. And these were Abraham, these were uh, Jeremiah's cousins and relatives and etc. But God told uh, Jeremiah, don't pray for them. Amen. Not even for their good. Yes. Now when God tells a prophet, a man of God, not to pray for you, it's, it's bad. One of the most dynamic prophets in biblical history was Jeremiah. He prophesied during a time of social political, and especially religious unrest yes. with many complexities to go along with it. Right. Uh, he had such a dynamic personality who encumbered the spirit of the suffering Christ right. who continuously, seemingly, throughout his ministry, wept. Mm -hmm. The Lord told him not to even marry. Uh, it was just that bad in his generation. Many called him and still referred to Jeremiah as the weeping prophet. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. I'm calling him the suffering prophet who was told by God to even not have a wife, no family, during this period of time. Uh, it would not be suitable. Uh, and for the information as well as the message that he had to deliver to a hypocritical Israel. Yeah. All he had was 
the Lord God as his companion. And I can earnestly understand to a certain point how he feels. My late pastor now has gone on to be with the Lord. Yeah. And he was truly my friend. Yeah. I'm talking about the Reverend Dr. C.J. Anderson. Yeah. 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 He was truly a friend. Yeah. Yeah. And he was a father uh, in the gospel. Yeah. Apparently, talking about Jeremiah, he definitely wanted to pray eagerly yes. and earnestly for his kinfolk, his relatives. But God said, don't do that. Don't ask me. Because right. I will not hear you. Not for his own people. Look at Jeremiah. And listen to him in uh, the ninth chapter, verse 1. Oh, that my head were waters, and my eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. The Lord told him to stand uh, e in the way and see and ask for the old path where it is the good way and walk therein. He shall find rest for your soul. But they said, we will not walk therein. You see, uh, we have a problem with uh, becoming unattached to our loved ones. So much so until uh, the lady that was running for her life. Miss Lot yes, yes. turned to a pillar of salt yes, yes. because she was so attached to Solomon Gomorrah and her children yes. till she lost her soul. Yes. She turned to a pillar of salt when she was instructed not to look back. That's right. Right. But she was in her heart so attached. You got to be careful. God is trying to tell us something. Right. Those loose strings. Sometimes uh, uh, Isaiah couldn't see God yeah. until the Lord took his uncle right. yeah. in the year that King Uzziah died. Yeah. I also saw the Lord. Right. Sometimes people are standing in your way, God's trying to get your attention. Amen. That's why we can't agree with God. So we find him so ostracized mm -hmm. yes. as he delivers what thus said the Lord. Yes. And yet he had to deliver his message right. Right. because the Lord had told him to be not afraid of their faces. Right. For I am with you yes. to deliver uh, these said the Lord. Now you can read that in uh, Jeremiah 1 and 8. All right. Jeremiah 1 and 17 says, Thou therefore gird up your loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command you. Be not dismayed. In other words, don't, like when you look at their faces and when they have a certain look, don't get upset. Right. Don't let it fade you. All right. All right. Uh, don't uh, be not dismayed at their faces. Right. 
lest I confound you before them. In other words, lest I confuse you by looking, don't get confused at what you see by their faces. You know, people can show express and let you know how they feel and don't care. That's why the Lord uh, made the prophet Ezekiel's head an animal stone so he would see all those hard faces and those bad looks so that he would don't care and deliver God's word. See, God already knew the hearts of his people and what Jeremiah the prophet was going to face. He put his Holy Spirit in Jeremiah, even when Jeremiah said that he wasn't going to preach or prophesy anymore, the Spirit of Christ, who was in him, moved him, even though he was a man, but with God in him, he moved him. It was just like fire shut up in his lungs. This book in life of Jeremiah is so dynamic until some theologians say that it is structured incoherently. But as I read Jeremiah, the prophet, the Lord in guiding and moving and telling Jeremiah what to say and when to say it, it is awesomely perfect. It's a beautiful piece of Christian literature. Uh, sometimes we don't understand the times, but God understands the times. Amen. It is awesome by uh, how we see the Lord God and how he dealt with the hardness, the rebellion, the arrogance, the insensitivity, and the unbelieving children of Israel through the prophet Jeremiah. And that's something in God you're not going to move. Regardless what you say and how you say it. Because they're dedicated to God. We go back to chapter 18 where I would like to briefly spend some time to press my claim. This morning, when where Jeremiah writes at the beginning of his uh, chapter in saying the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, "Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my word." Now, in other words, I know you have a difficult Jeremiah to understand what I'm trying to tell you. Yes. And it's kind of hard for you to uh, uh, grasp. But let me kind of show you. Let me kind of demonstrate to you. Sometimes uh, uh, we are people who got to see. We don't believe. We're just like the Nicodemus. You know, unless I see in his hand and Feeling this side, I won't believe. That's Thomas, brother. Yeah, Dolly Thomas. It's amazing how, how the Lord speaks to his men and moves them in a way that uh, he wants them to be moved. Yes, uh, I. I did not agree with God until he came to me in Amarillo, Texas, 10 weeks in, into my 12-week period there in school. At approximately 9 o'clock, uh, when Reverie was being played, with my dog tag, I was in the military, it went around my uh, white t-shirt, and I put my Bible under my pillow. I didn't agree with God until I uh, laid my head on the pillow and drifted off into this deep abyss. 
I was uh, suspended somewhere where I cannot describe. It was, it seemed like in space somewhere, but it was much deeper. And this voice said, preach or die. And uh, I said to myself, uh, I've had many nightmares, and I prayed myself out of the nightmares. I began to pray. And this voice said again to me, preach or die. I said, wait a minute, this is not a nightmare. This is the Lord that's talking to me. And if I don't say uh, that I will not consent, uh, I may not come out of this. And if I do say, and if I don't mean it, he knows my heart. The third time the voice said, preach or die. And I could sin and I agreed with God. I said, yes, Lord. Right. And when I said that I came up out of my bed, out of this place where I was, deep place, came back to myself. I, I was perspiring, sweat was, but I preached. Yeah. That was in 1965. Yeah. Ever since then, I've been preaching. Yeah. God knows how to yeah. take you, open your eyes, let you know that that's him talking to you. Amen. As I'm driving along in St. Louis after preaching my uh, one of three messages at the beginning preaching in 1965, this voice, just like I'm talking, uh, and I'm awake, wide awake, this voice says, preach Jesus. A small voice. It was hot in St. Louis that and when I rolled over and up, Trying to hear it again, I go over and I stuck my head, keep driving, stuck my head out the window. All right. But I know I remember one thing, and that was to preach Jesus. All right. All right. Oh, I agree with God. Right. Because in preaching and preaching about Jesus, it's been my strength in my life. I've seen many people say that's the ultimate. I love the Lord. Yes. This prophet had to go through some go through some things yes. to agree with God. That's why I read the script at the beginning. He said, let me see. Uh, uh, my, let me see what you're going to do to my enemies. Yeah. You know, he was really saying, Lord, I agree with you yeah. for what you want to do. Yeah. I agree with you yeah. to allow the Babylonians, yeah. even though it's going to hurt, I don't want to see my people suffer, yeah. but I agree with you. He is told by the Lord to go to the potter's house. Mm -hmm. And the Lord says, I will give you my message yes. there. Yeah, right. I will open up your understanding, in other words. Mm -hmm. And began being the obedient prophet that he was, he went to the potter's house and he began to look at the potter while working the clay mm -hmm. at the wheel as he made pots from the clay. Yes. And he saw how something was wrong mm -hmm. as the potter was making pots with the clay, yes. which the potter used that same clay yes. And again, made another pot. Uh, he used his hands to shape the pot the way he wanted it to be. Which Jeremiah says, Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheel. Yes. I'm reading from the chapter 18, verse 3 through 4 mm -hmm. 
of Jeremiah. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Uh, so we find, we find the Lord coming to Jeremiah and explaining to him in using how the potter shaped the clay in saying, O oh, house of Israel, can I do with you as this potter? Right. Yes. Saith the Lord, behold, as the clay is in uh, the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. O oh, house of Israel, how many times have God come to you? Right. And you said, no, Lord, I don't want that. You prayed. Now, listen, 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 listen. Wow. Now, you have already prayed. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Oh, make me strong. I want to live for you. Right. And when the Lord says, all right, go through this. Go through that. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want that cross. I want that this cross too heavy. I want a little small cross, Lord. And you just got to pray it for the Chris. You just got to pray it for the Lord to help you. You just got to pray it for the Lord to regulate your mind. You just got to uh, pray it for the Lord to open up doors. And now you say, oh, no, Lord. Right. Instead of us walking by faith, yeah. Lord, yeah. give me strength. Yeah. He'll give you strength yeah. to go through. But you gotta praise him. Yeah. You gotta accept his will. Yeah. Cowards don't make it. No. no. He showed him, he showed him how. I can shape Israel. I'm shaping Israel. Yes. I have a reason. I've already told you, that, Jeremiah, yes. on three occasions why I'm not going to accept your prayer for Israel. Right. I'm not yes. going to answer your prayer for Israel. Not for their good. Right. They're not listening. So I've got to shape them. Yes. Just like he's shaping the world. Just like he's shaping the church. Just like he's shaping America. Yes. Yeah, we are praying. But God been charged. His hand is at first. Yeah. 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 Is he shaping America? He yeah. sure it looks bad. It looks dark next year, but it looks bad. But God is shaping. Yeah. Yeah. Not only is he shaping outwardly, he's shaping in the church. Yeah. Yeah. God is how you look at it. God is how you accept it. He's shaping. And if you don't go here, he'll take that piece out. If you don't want to accept it, behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. You read it for yourself, 18 and 6. So we go to the scriptures and we see the Lord giving Jeremiah a visual understanding of his almightiness and, and uh, what he wants to do and how he wants to do with his people. Yes. And he goes on uh, to say through the prophet, at what instant uh, and what is it I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down uh -huh. and to destroy it? Yeah. God is in charge. Yeah. I don't care yeah. who's in the White House. God is in charge. Yeah. I don't care who's in the White House. God is in charge. The Bible says, if that nation 
against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. I hear that's you can read uh, Jeremiah 18, 7 to 8. In other words, I can shape you and reshape you, but it is up to you yes. to repent and to return. Amen. Listen, that's why Jeremiah said, Lord, I agree. Yes. I want to see yes. what you're going to do. Yes. Yet it's tough. It's hard. Right. Sure. We don't want to see America go down. No. I don't because we all did it. Yes. Nobody on the Titanic wanted to see it go down. That's crazy. Yes. Yes, sir. You're right. But it went down. Yes. One man said, you got to be careful being boastful. Yes. One man said, God means uh, sink the ship. And it sank so, so far down they can't get it out. You got to be careful bragging how great you are. How right. God is in charge. Then he goes. Then he goes on to say through Jeremiah the prophet to the people, if it do work, if you do evil in listen, if you do evil in my sight, what is doing evil? Going against God's word. Amen. 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 We don't read the Bible anymore. Some scoff at the church. Some they they uh Kill Christians now. They beat them up. Yes. But don't you know that's dangerous? Amen. If it do evil in my sight, that it may not, uh, that it obey not my voice, yes. then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. Now therefore, go to speak to the men of Judah. Right. Now you got understanding. Yeah. Jeremiah, now you got understanding. Go, go tell them what I just told you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you, and devise a device against you. Return you now, everyone from his evil ways, yes. and make your ways and your doings good. Yes. And they said, there is no hope. Listen, people don't want to hear what they, I don't care what you say. Right. When a person make up their mind, don't want to hear you, they not going to hear you. Yes. But I got to tell you anyway. That's the wages of sin and death. Yeah. Yeah. The gift of God is eternal life. Amen. This is what the people replied to Jeremiah. And they said, there is no hope. But we will walk after our own devices. And we will, everyone do the imagination of his evil heart. Therefore, thus said the Lord, ask ye not among the heathen who have heard such things. The virgin of Israel have done a very horrible thing. People outside of this country see how great we are blessed. And yet we are like crabs. People outside of this country yes. see how great God has blessed us. Yes. The easy reader version says, but the people of Judah will answer, we don't care what you say. This is the easy reader version. We will continue to do what we want to do. We want. We do not 
For we do the evil of our stubborn hearts want. Listen to what the Lord says. Ask the other nations this question. Have you ever heard of anything so bad? Now the Lord is saying to them, ask other nations, have you ever heard of, of people doing me like they doing me as I've been so good to them? As I've built them a great nation? As I've given them, yes, I'm giving you uh, number one this and number one that. Great things in life. Have you ever heard of such? So we find Jeremiah standing all by himself. Children, the church got to be a light. Got to be a light in the world. I know this message. I know this message. It's not a a uh, message where you can jump and shout and yeah, you can walk on the water. No, we want to get down with the nitty gritty. Amen. The cure is repent. Yes. Come back to God if you want uh, peace and harmony. Yes. The nation got to repent. Amen. I hear it on TV. I hear the commercial. There's some beautiful commercials on TV. Yes. Talking about read your Bible. Repent. Where are you going if you don't go to heaven? It's on the television. I'm so glad to see those uh, uh, commercials talking about God. I listened to the president when three or four weeks ago he said, Oh, we need help. The only one, I don't think he said, wear a mask, no mask. He said, But if God, we need him. We need the Paul. And somebody don't believe it, but we do need God. Amen. I heard him say, somebody was saying to him that he's the famous, most famous man in the world. He said, I know. He said, no, I'm not. He said, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, you should have shouted on that. Jesus Christ is the most. Oh, yes, he is. Sorry, amen. When you are hurt, Boy. you proud to him. Yeah. This is the day yeah. you cry out to him. Yeah. Let the world know. Yeah. He said, if you look for him, I'm going to spew you. Yeah. 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 Already hear what Israel, the stubborn, he said, stubborn hearts. Yeah. You know what stubborn hearts mean? Yeah. That's just as like witchcraft. You know, what witch, you know what the Bible says about witches? That they should not live. Now that's a bad thing to be a stubborn person. Amen. Have a stubborn heart. Amen. God is moving. God is awesome. As the prophet Jeremiah prophesied more of what thus said the Lord and on the uh, Job training, things God gave him on the job training. The Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob taught the prophet Jeremiah, such as the prophets experienced at the potter's house yes. in shaping the clay, how crying, as he saw, daily their sinful way yes. to be stubborn Ooh. in their hearts, to not walk in the old past. We see two uh, scenarios of the handiwork of God. We see the work of God shaping the prophet Jeremiah, where the prophet agrees more and more with the Lord God. We see Jeremiah's heart, mind, and soul agreeing with the Lord God. Read Jeremiah 20 and 11, verse says, but the Lord is with me yes. as a mighty uh, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed yes. for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. Right. 
So he agrees with God yes. that Israel is in disagreement and rebellion against God. Right. And God has the last say so. Because of the mistreatment by Israel mm -hmm. towards the prophet Jeremiah, it is like a mistreatment toward God uh, because uh, the prophet Jeremiah is God's spokesperson. Right. He is God's spokesman. Right. Yes, yes, all throughout the book of Jeremiah, yes. we hear him saying the words, What thus said the Lord? Yes. You see, church, whether Sunday school teacher or usher or choir member yes. or deacon or preacher mm -hmm. or pastor, the more you are in line with God's word, the more you teach, the more you live, the more I preach and according to God's word, the more you testify yes. to others and tell them what the Lord says, yes. and you do the Lord's will, the more you agree with God, yes. and the more the world will hate you yes. and rebel against you because you're telling what thus said the Lord. Yes. Turn away from the truth, truth yes. with itching ears to hear right. a lie. Right. The Lord Jesus said that they will even kill you, mm -hmm. thinking that they are doing God's service. Right. But be of good cheer. Right. As the Lord protected Jeremiah yes. from his enemies, even though they were his own household, mm -hmm. even though they were his own people, they made uh, rebel against you, church, for right. living right, for right. talking the way God wants you to talk, and, right. and, and for you to walk the way God wants you to walk. Yeah. Just keep doing it. Yeah. God will be your protection. They're not your enemies. They're God's enemies. Yeah. You take it personal. Yeah. So we find Jeremiah constantly weeping and, and crying like Jesus cried over Jerusalem. Yes, O Jerusalem, Jesus said, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them with, uh, uh, stonest them uh, which are sent unto you. How often would I have gathered your children together, even as a hen gathers her chickens yes. under her wing. Yes. But you wouldn't do it. Oh, oh, so we find that Jeremiah, the prophet, loved his people. Yes. You can't be a pastor not loving your congregation. The sheep. Love no one off and put the sheep in somebody else's hand. Love don't uh, take advantage of the sheep monetarily, mainly. The pastor is an example of God's love. So we find that Jeremiah loved his people to the point that it became an oxymoron that he agreed with God more. He absolutely agreed with God in telling them that they were wrong right, right, right. and that they would die, you know, with the pestilence, yes. the sword, the famine. Yes. Three things. If one can get you, the other one. Three times God told him not to pray. Three times God tells Jeremiah that uh, three things will 
take it down if you don't repent. The famine, the sword of pestilence. If the sword do not kill you, then the pestilence will. The virus is raging. If the pestilence did not kill you, the famine shortage of food is coming. Shortage of food is coming. He wept more for those who would be taken away by Nebuchadnezzar. Yes. He wept for them. Right. He wept for Jerusalem. Yes. He, wept for, he wept for his people. Yes. Never to see the promised land or Jerusalem anymore. But yet he told them that those who willfully go and humble themselves under the reign of Nebuchadnezzar King, right. then he would take care of them. Right. God always got a way to take care of his people. Right. So if you think y'all are going to leave the church, yeah. 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 sure there's persecution, but he's not going to leave the church. Yeah. He loves Israel too. Yeah. Oh, he loves the Jews. Yeah. Yeah. And he loves the church. Yeah. 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 How often do we cry? and are very sad in our hearts for our family members and our close friends and for those who uh, immaturely die, yes. such as our black young men who are on the streets and gunned down because of disobedience yes. and our young women who are out selling their virtue. We cry. Oh, yes, we do. How yes. often do we cry when we look at how the Lord has blessed yes. the United States of America? Yes. And she is so divided. Yes. As the prophecy yes. on the saying of the Apostle Paul, who said that in the last days there would be wickedness yes. in high places. Yes. How often do the righteous weep? and cry because of how the world Lord, Lord. is going more towards Sodom and Gomorrah, yes. like as in the days of Noah yes. and in the days of Lot, yes. men loving men and right. women yes. and loving women. They try to throw out the agenda now. Yes. A man will always be a man. Yes. A woman will always yes. be a woman. Yes. Amen. The how often, look at the unrepenting world. Yes. We'll never see eternal daylight and eternal blitz, but we'll always be in eternal darkness. Right. Yes, confusion. Yes. 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 Right. The weeping is so is for the loss of soul, right. the loss of privileges and favor with God, yes. the lack of the power to see, yes. and the rebellious spirit of those that we love so dearly who are against God. Yes. The more we agree with God, the more we walk by faith yes. and obey him and do his will. Yes. The more we can see God who tells us our responsibilities and who gives us a charge to keep. Yes. He shapes our attitude. Yes. He shapes our mind. Yes. He shapes our heart yes. to think like him, yes. to be like him. Yes. As he is shaping our heart, uh -huh. as he is shaping our mind, uh -huh. as he is shaping our attitude, yes. he is also preparing our enemy yes. for destruction. Yes. He is also yes. destroying by delusion. Hallelujah. Yes. Those, when I say enemies, those who refuse right. and stubbornly yes. don't change. Right. That's right. That's right. We pray that all men will change. Amen. Yes. God is long suffering. Yes. He don't want to see yes. anybody lost. Yes. And neither does the church. Yes. Amen. He is also shaping by delusions. Yes. By delusion because of their rebellious heart, yes. their stubborn heart. Yes. Like he did Haman, who hung on the gallows, yes. who was blinded by hatred, yes. who hung 
who hungered after power and control. He hung on the gallows that he built for Mordecai. This is the same way that God prepares the unrighteous who are unrepentant uh, for destruction. Oh, yes, church. He is transforming us as unto his son. And we agree with him because he's been so good to us. Amen. Yes, he is preparing us as we as we uh, as uh, as we are long suffering, as we go like God through our suffering to tell the world, as Jeremiah told his people Israel, the old past is the right way. Oh, yes, it is. Change. When change comes without God, okay, it causes confusion yes. and chaos. Yes. Yes. But they said they will not. What is the use? Therefore, they continue to do what they were willing and wanted to do. We see what we uh, we see what they cannot see. Yes. Oh yes, we do. Right. The more Church can get ready, get ready. Yes. We agree with God. Uh -huh. He is shaping us. Yes. He is transforming us for eternity. Amen. The more we agree with God, yes. the less the world will agree with you. Yes. And the more they will hate you. During the during this social, I'm just about closing here. During this social, political, and cultural explosive electoral conflicting period of time, all Christians must uh, must be anxious for nothing. The Apostle Paul tells us in his letter to the Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse six, but be careful for nothing. Yes. But in everything by prayer and supplications yes. with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known yes. unto God. Yes. In other words, don't be too hasty don't be too quick to make decisions of who's right and who's wrong. Take it to God. Don't be so fast to agree or disagree with the news media. Take it to God. One of my High school teachers told me back in the 60s that the story in the newspaper, they had newspapers, they didn't have no media stuff like they have now. The newspaper's story that you read today uh, is partial truth. Wait three or four days. All week and reread the same story, you'll get a whole different understanding. That's why you have to take it to God. Some people, many people are drunk, jumping to conclusions now that this is right and this is wrong. Take it to God. God has the answer. Yes. More and more people, even church people today, are reading garbage, or like are reading garbage cans, yes. where you can dump all vile news, you can dump all lies and deceit, questionable truths, yes. where they 
never in where they never investigate if it's true or not. Right. Right. Take it to God. Right. The only gospel book is the holy book. Right. Holy Bible. Amen. 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 Not your horoscope. Amen. Not the media. It changes. Man is a changing being, but God never changes. Amen. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Minds of people are so confused now. Right. They don't know what to believe. Right. Yep. Pray. Yes. Fast and wait. Yes. Pray. Fast and wait. Yes. God will bring you the answer. Many, I mean many, do less reading to say the least of, uh, about research mm -hmm. on a particular subject matter. Yeah. And many don't even read the Bible like they used to, right. even in the church. Our atmosphere today is like a Desperate housewife or a desperate woman who wants a man who will accept and run off after a man that wears pants, regardless what he thinks, regardless what attitude he got, instead of being very, very slow to investigate. Take your time, yes. prayerfully, yes. and let everything fall in place. Yes. Let everything unfold. Yes. That's right. Let me tell you one thing, that there are examples in the Holy Bible yes. of successful men and women yes. who carefully made, made decisive decisions. Yes. By agreeing with God. Yes. David. Yes. David never went anywhere without asking God. Right. Except when he sinned. Right. Right. That's right. That's right. Ezekiel. Yes. He said, oh Lord, thou knowest. Yes. He agreed with God. Yes. Ruth. Yes. Read, read about Ruth. She agreed with God. Yes. Naomi, my, my mother-in-law, where you go, I'll go. Where you go, your God, you my God. Read about Esther. Yes. She prayed and fast. Yes. She said, if I die, I die. Right. The prophets and servants yes. who are all who all prayed and laid out their supplications and agreed with the Lord God. Never, never choose or error or went. They never error or went the wrong way. Let's go in, uh, let's, let me go back. There was one prophet who was told to go in and go out, but he didn't agree with God, and he lost his life. A lion and killed him. Let's go into the biblical narrative story of a prophet and how the Lord talked and convinced your mind. And I want to conclude this message. As I come to the close of this message, mm -hmm. these are critical times. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. As I sat and listened to my pastor, the Reverend Dr. C.J. Anderson, yes. preach about the Apostle Peter. Dr. Anderson said that Peter oftentimes disagreed with Jesus. But Jesus was always right. How often have we disagreed with the Lord? But the Lord, you can say it yourself. You know the Lord is always right.
Some leaders, officials in the world, said that the church is not essential. But you know what, King? I wholeheartedly disagree. Because God established, Jesus established the church. And the church will always be essential. Whether you accept it or not, he says, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gate of hell shall not prevail. I've told you this so many times. After my big pastor went home to meet the Lord, I, in my ways and actions, was told to carry out some things. And in my ways and actions, like Jonah, mm. prophet who took a ship to Tarshish instead of going to Nineveh. Right. He disagreed with God. Yeah. And a great fish, the Bible says, God had a great fish waiting for him. Right. And God disturbed the water. He let him get, he let him get, uh, uh, let them get on the calm water, let them get out there, where they had no help. And the water got so ferocious, they couldn't go backwards or fall. They were just stuck. I kind of reminds me when we traveled on the trip to Pastor Anthony. Oh, no, we don't have any Joneses on the trip. And so Jonah, when he woke up and saw what was going on, he said, I'm the problem. He said, throw me overboard. Man, they tried to roll again. They couldn't. Go, what would you do, man? I just, didn't, I, I just obeyed the God. I didn't agree with God. That's why I'm on this ship. I, I'm going the opposite way he told me to go. I just for him. So the men, they threw him over and yeah. the sea got so calm, they got so calm. They were eerie. Yeah. Yeah. But under the, under the uh, uh, top of the water, there was a whole lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Well, that was a big, the Bible says a great fish. Yeah. It didn't say a whale. No. It said a great fish. That fish must be humongous. We call it a whale, but it must be bigger than a whale. The Bible says a great fish. I'll just go with what the Bible says. Swallow Jonah. And Jonah kept saying, I just went down. 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 God got a fish waiting for you when you don't know his will. How you travel around. Now, usually, when you end. Something it dissolves you, right. but God heals you. Right. We all they talk about in this pandemic. And I talk about bubbles. They playing basketball in bubbles and baseball in bubbles. God had a bubble in, yeah. in the great fish's mouth. Jonah didn't die. He was there for three days. He didn't starve. I've never heard he got thirsty. That's never been, been reading in the Bible. But one thing John did, he prayed. Yes. Yes. And he repented. Yes. Amen. So after he repented to do what God told him, he agreed with God. He told him what he told him to do. So God heard his prayer and he had the great fish to spit him out. Bom yes. bom the Bible says vomit him. He just vomit. Let you know. That you did wrong. You 
vomit him out. Now that's the, the fish is spinning out, he vomits. Now you know that's a whole lot of So so here I am. After and Jonah preached. What he did, what he was supposed to do in three days, he did in one. And the whole city began. So we find, we find, I'm coming to the close of this. I'm trying to tell you, I was like Jonah. I was given instruction by the old lady pastor. All right. To do certain things. But I made up in my mind, I said, well, I'll just tip in and tip out. And I'll just kind of be uh, and uh, not be seen as much. I'll just go in and go out and uh, incognito. Not be seen. But as I was going to my Tasha, that was that was Sacramento at that time. No, I'm sorry, that was uh, Eugene Oregon. I got sick. And it wasn't a sickness where I was vomiting, but it was a physical problem. And the more I prayed, the more seemingly I went into this problem that I had. You know, like John was going down and down. I told you when we got to Eugene, Oregon, we checked in the team, the track team, and we went to the track and we saw the track and it was hurt like bad. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I went to the room, we got checked in. And, boy, I'm just, I'm praying. Oh, Lord. Well, thank God it was three days, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's mercy. So, we get us uh, situated, got, got the young people checked into the rooms, got all the track rooms up there, and we went to dinner that night. I got the tables and I was just hurting. I said, excuse me for a minute. I went to the bathroom and got down on my knees in the, the stall, where you know where you do this. Okay. I stuck my head in the commode on this. Say, Lord, have mercy. Oh, please have mercy. It just got worse. I, I passed on by the table where uh, Sister Scott was sitting and others. I went outside. I said, I said, Lord. And just as I went out, this coach, he was my angel. He was coming in. The very one I had met earlier, just for the first time in my life, I say, uh, I told him, I say, uh, I forgot his name. I said, would you take me to the hospital? He said, come on. He didn't say, wait till I go in here and eat. And he said, come on. Yeah. Took me right to the hospital. Yeah. I checked in. I have an emergency here. Yeah. Took me in the room right quick. Checked me in. Began to administered to me. They began to administer to me. And as I was on that table, let me tell you one thing. While I was in the hospital, God got a way to put you in line with his will. Just like he's doing America. Just like he's doing California. Just like he's going to do the church. He's going to put you in line. It looks out of control, but God is at work. As I was laying in the hospital, 
I said, Lord, forgive me. I'll do what you told me to do. And I won't be inconspicuous. I'll be out front. In my, that's why I, in so many words, I was just saying, I was repenting. After I was laying up there and repenting, I told that girl, I said, all this stuff off me. She said, oh, no, miss, uh, you have to wear it. I, I'm not taking with you. Wear it at home. Take it off. I'm ready. I'm ready. She said, what you need? I said, I don't need it. We do repent. We do get right with God and agree with God. Things will work out in your life. Oh, thanks God for letting me agree with you. Yes. If I had not agreed, this church would never have been born out of grace, prayer, and faith, God. God looked up the road and see other who things paid. He is not interested in our disagreement. He wants us to agree because the real will be done. He saw, he saw us purchasing this building. He saw 40 members paying this building off in six years and nine months. To his glory, to his glory. God got You got a reason for you to go through. You got a reason for the challenges in your life because he's seen further than you do.
Yes, 